Let's talk about scope. Scope is a term we use to explain, among other things, whether or not values and functions fall through to subfunctions. For example, var has a different scope than let and const do. The former is function scoped, the latter are block scoped. Here's an example. Let's start with some data. And here's some ES5 code that shows function scoped variables. So that should log each of our Avengers. And there we go. This works because the variable log string gets hoisted, meaning it becomes known at the top level of the function, even if it's undefined, for example, if you call log name with no value, like this. Const and let are not hoisted. They're scoped to whatever block they're in. So this code is going to break like the bones of an alien soldier getting hit by Thor's hammer. Ready to see an error? And there we go, uncaught reference error name string is not defined. This is because let is only known within that if block. The correct way to write that function in ES6 is to move the variable declaration out of the if block, like this. Now that'll work. Of course, that's a ridiculous function that could be reduced down to one line in real life, like this. As you can see, that'll do the exact same thing. But this code is for example purposes. So let's go back to the blocks. I tend to favor block scoping over function scoping because I find it helps keep things a little cleaner, but there are times when the latter is valuable. Where scoping becomes a bit more interesting is in how functions treat this. Because JavaScript functions can both be plain functions that just take an input and return a value, or constructors that allow you to create new instances of an object, how to handle this gets a little muddy. In ES5 constructors, this does not fall down to any functions called within the constructor. Here's an example. We're going to console log our team members' names, one per second. Let's give that a shot. Whoops, that doesn't work. It just logs undefined forever and ever or at least until Thanos shows up and our computer is nuked in the ensuing destruction. Let's take out that line so this stops counting. So, why doesn't that code work? Because in ES5 constructors, functions are initialized with their own this. The this from the parent doesn't fall through into the function we're passing to set interval. So this dot count is undefined in there. You can't console log the value of an array at position undefined, nor can you increment undefined by one. The solution to this, traditionally, has been either to add a line at the top of the constructor like var that equals this, and then use that in the subfunctions, or to bind this to the subfunction, like the following code. Now this will work, although it will still break when it reaches the end of the array. We could fix that with a clear interval. In that code, we're telling the constructor, instead of initializing that anonymous function with its own this, use the parent this instead. That's fine, but arrow functions once again make our life easier and cleaner. Here's how to write our name lister with ES2015. Let's check it out. Perfect, and no one defines because we added in that clear interval. That code works because arrow functions don't auto-define this. So we're able to access the this from the parent function. This is called lexical scope, and all it means is that subfunctions have access to values from their parent functions. In ES5 constructors, this is not lexically scoped. If you use arrow functions as your nested functions, however, then this becomes lexically scoped. Scope in JavaScript can be a tricky subject, and it's difficult to illustrate the value of lexical this without getting into big chunks of code that use deeply nested functions. This often happens with promises and callbacks. We'll be covering promises at some point in this series, so you might see lexical this make its triumphant return at that point. See you next week!